Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another low-end smartphone. This is the LG X Charge, and it costs 150 bucks on Amazon if you're a Prime subscriber. Uh, for that price, though, you will be seeing ads in your lock screen like this, but otherwise it is a, a pretty decent Android experience. And they also have one for $200 that doesn't have the ads. Uh, this will work on AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint here in the United States, but not Verizon. It is unlocked, so you can swap out SIM cards anytime you want on it. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed this video before I uploaded it. Let's get into it and see what this phone can do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has a five and a half inch display running at 720p, but I was surprised by how bright and how sharp everything was on it. It really is a nice display for the price point, even if the resolution is lower than some other more expensive flagship phones might be. Uh, one thing I did notice with the display is that there is a good deal of motion blur as you're scrolling around with it here. So that might be uh, where some of the cost factors come into play. It looks fine when you're reading on it, but uh, as you're moving things around, maybe in games or something, you might see a little more blurring around fast moving objects than you might on a more expensive phone. But otherwise, I am not uh, all that unhappy with it. It is powered by an MT6750 octa-core processor. It has 16 gigabytes of storage and two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's kind of on the lower end of the spectrum, but again, we're on a low end phone here. Uh, you can though put in an SD card. There's a SIM tray that also has an SD card tray on it. Uh, you can go up to a two terabyte SD card if you wanted to. So you've got plenty of room to uh, expand storage on here if you slide in a micro SD card. It's running Android 7.1 Nougat, which means you can do all the split screen stuff that uh, this version of the OS provides here. So we've got a YouTube video here running along with uh, a web browser here at the same time. So there's some stuff you can do with that uh, new operating system. And given that it is from LG, it's likely that you might see updates on this one more than you might with some other brands out there. So these days with all these security things that pop up every other week, uh, that is good to see. Now they're calling this phone the charge because they put a big battery in here, 4,500 milliamp hours, which they say is good for two days of usage. And these kinds of battery projections are often hard to apply to every use case, but uh, what we've seen here, the standby time certainly has been very good. We charged it up before we started testing it the other day. It's been running now for about a day and a half, two days here, and I still have about 65% uh, left in the tank. Now, we're not playing a lot of games on it. It's been mostly sitting uh, idle for a good chunk of that time, but nonetheless, the battery here seems to be pretty decent, and they also uh, include fast charging capability, and they give you the fast charger in the box. So uh, all in, not a bad uh, power experience here on this phone. I think you'll get uh, definitely a full workday out of it under most scenarios. But again, if you are uh, playing a lot of games or watching a lot of video, or maybe you're a little farther away from your cell tower than other users might be, you might see uh, some variations in that battery life. So just keep that in mind on it. It weighs about 167 grams or 5.9 ounces. It is a little bit large because it does have that five and a half inch screen. It reminds me a lot of the uh, iPhone uh, 6 or 7 or 8 Plus, the larger phone there. So it is a little hard to uh, reach across the screen with one hand, but if you are looking for a bigger screen, this will certainly get you there. And it supports Bluetooth, of course, for headsets and other peripherals, but it does not support 5 gigahertz AC wireless when you are at home and using your Wi-Fi. So it will use the slower uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless standard. But given that this is a uh, lower end phone, I don't think the Wi-Fi limitation there is that big of a deal. Not much for ports on it. You do have a headphone jack here at the bottom to plug in headphones. There are none included, so you have to bring your own. And there is a micro USB port here for charging as well as a USB OTG, but this is not a USB type C connector. Uh, just a power button here on this side for turning the phone on and off. You got your volume rocker over here. The SIM tray pops out over here. I took this apart on our extras channel so you can see that. And there is nothing on the top here but a microphone for when you are using it in speakerphone mode. Uh, the speaker is at the bottom of the phone here, right in the back. It doesn't sound all that great, but it is loud. So you will have a, a decent volume to the speaker, but uh, not so great audio experience when you are listening. So headphones might be something you should pursue on this one if you are listening to music. Uh, there is a five megapixel front facing selfie camera and flash here. Nothing spectacular, but it will take a picture and do some video conferencing if you need to. Uh, the camera on the back I was disappointed with. 
It is a 13 megapixel sensor, has a 2.0 aperture on it. It does have a flash here. It is uh, focusable. You can set your focal points on it and everything, but the image quality on the camera is not great. It's a cheap phone. Uh, you're going to get photos that you would expect out of a cheap phone here. You can see some examples of the photos that it took. It does shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second, but we weren't all that impressed with the video quality on this one either. So on these low-end phones, there's always some kind of compromise made to get it to the price point that it's at. And on this one, it looks like the camera was the compromise, but it is better than nothing at all. Performance, though, seems to be pretty decent on it. Web browsing feel, felt snappy and responsive, as you can see here. Uh, we also ran a few apps like the YouTube app here as well, and those things uh, did pop up pretty quickly, and it's very fast to uh, spin up video here, especially on Wi-Fi. So I think from a overall you know, low-end casual user experience on here, uh, it is going to be a pretty nice one. Let's take a look, though, at some gaming and see how it performs with some of the popular Android games out there. So let's start off here with some Minecraft, and as you can see, it looks like it's got a pretty decent frame rate on here, so no issues with Minecraft, and I'm sure other casual games should be pretty good on here as well. Uh, let's pop out of this and just run over to Grand Theft Auto Vice City real quick so you can see how everything is working there, and a uh, pretty fast and smooth frame rate on this game too. So I think from a gaming perspective, a lot of the casual games you'll find on the Google Play or Amazon app stores should be uh, just fine on here because most of these games are really targeted at this hardware. The one issue though I found is that occasionally this navigation bar does not go away. I don't know if it's an issue with this particular version of Grand Theft Auto Vice City and uh, Android Nougat running here on this phone, but there is an issue with the navigation bar sometimes popping up in places where it should not. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot Gaming Benchmark, we got a score of 438, which puts it right in line with the Blue S1 I looked at a couple of weeks ago, which is powered by the same exact processor. And again, most of the games you're going to encounter on the Google Play or Android app stores are targeting this kind of hardware that is on the low to mid level. So I don't think you'll have a hard time playing a lot of the popular Android games out there. There will, of course, be games that might push the limit a little bit further that this phone won't be able to do. But again, I think you'll have a lot of choices out there for entertainment. It also has a gyroscope built in. So if you're playing some of the AR games like uh, Pokemon Go or something, it should uh, work OK with those as well. But higher end phones will do a better job with some of the VR activities that you might do with a mobile phone. So over Overall, not a bad little smartphone here for the money, but you will have these uh, lock screen ads pop up every time you turn the phone on. So you can't customize your lock screen because you will be looking at uh, ads every time you uh, try to turn your phone on. Once you unlock the phone, the ads go away. It's not a very intrusive experience after that, but uh, that saves you 50 bucks on the price. You can spend 200 bucks and not get them on there at all. I think this phone is very well suited for casual users. The battery life on it is very good, especially for folks that forget to charge their phone every once in a while. Uh, it does charge up very fast with the included fast charger. So uh, from the standpoint of power, I think it's a, a pretty good little device for battery longevity. Uh, not so great camera though, but again, if you are not looking for anything all that fancy, this will accomplish all of the major smartphone tasks you might be looking to do uh, for a low cost. And there is no carrier commitment either. So you don't extend the life of your contract. You just take the SIM card out of the phone that you have, put it in here and uh, you should be good to go on your existing carrier. Again, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint are what this is compatible with here in the United States. So a lot of flexibility with this one, uh, pretty decent price on it. And overall, I think it's uh, something I can recommend to folks who don't really need all that much out of their smartphone, but again, want to do some of the basic tasks that you might want to do with a phone. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.